Welcome to Ace Linguistics. This channel is about all things linguistic, discussing topics in phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and sociolinguistics. So let's see what we've got today. Today, I want to talk about transcription. So, the sound and phonology is of course sound and recording and you tell people to repeat certain things. But at some point you want to indicate the sounds in writing, which is transcription. So, so far we have covered basic phonetics and phonology, and we have covered basic phonological processes. So if changes happen, we will know why they happen. We can explain them by, by saying, okay, they do this because they are assimilating. They do this because of dissimulation or they are, they are metathesizing the sounds. They are like changing them. But now we need to be able to transcribe sounds and to talk about them. So, we need to talk about transcription. Okay, so what is transcription doing? We are recording in writing what sounds are. We are recording sounds in writing. In a way, we are translating sounds into written language because you cannot write sounds. Sounds are sounds, and once you write them, they are not sounds anymore. But you can represent sounds in writing we need to put them in writing because we want to have them in front of us visually and talk about it. Because we're going to talk about sounds a lot, we need to represent those sounds in writing. And our toolbox is the IPA. We are going to consistently stick to this. This is probably the most uh, elaborated on phonetic writing system. And we're going to use this toolbox to record sounds and to represent sounds in writing. There is two ways of transcribing sounds, broad transcription and narrow transcription, okay? So the difference is in broad transcription, you don't provide much detail. You only provide, you only write the primary sound symbols or in other words I could say broad transcription is phonemic transcription we just write the phonemes of the given language we don't write the allophones but what is narrow transcription I could say narrow transcription means transcribing the phonemes as well as the allophones. This is a simple definition of narrow transcription. The word pen consists of three sounds, three phonemes, p, e, n, e. And these are the three symbols for the three phonemes, okay? So you, what you do, you just go here, and you look, this is the first sound. The second sound is the open, mid, front, unrounded vowel, e. And then the third sound is the voiced alveolar nasal, n. So it's p, e, n. This is broad transcription. You see here, uh, the second symbol, you don't see that symbol typically, right? It's like a symbol that you see in the phonetic alphabet. So the dictionary, like most dictionaries, and now again English, and I think most dictionaries of all languages, they usually provide the pronunciation of the word. So, so imagine there is an English English dictionary, and then you're learning English, and then you come across the word pen you don't know how to pronounce that word and you have a paper dictionary or you, do you have an online dictionary which is just text-based if you know the ipa by looking at the ipa symbols 
you can translate them back to sounds. Of course, like most people would know how to pronounce the, pen, the word pen in English, but imagine you're learning the word, you're learning the English language, you come across the word pen and you don't know how to pronounce it because the regular alphabet is not an accurate representation of the way a word is pronounced. So you go to a dictionary and you look at the part in which the pronunciation is provided. Most dictionaries use the IPA. The point is here you have the word pen, right? It's transcribed. So you would know that it's pen, so it is pen. In this case, you can listen to the British pronunciation pen. or American pronunciation. But if you have a paper dictionary or if you go on a website that doesn't have this audios, the only thing you would have would be the, the written symbols, right? And then uh, you have these slashes that kind of indicate that it's a phonemic transcription. It's a broad transcription. But then you can have the square brackets for narrow transcription. But you see a difference between my transcription, which is also broad, and this transcription. Do you know what that difference is? Yes, the second symbol is different, right? So this dictionary provides a broad transcription of words in English, but it also does something else. It typically avoids the symbols, or I wouldn't say all the symbols, but some of the symbols that are not a, people are not really familiar with. Uh, so it is instead of using this symbol, it's using this. So instead of using the symbol for open mid, it's using the word the symbol for close mid. Because this symbol is not typically used. So look, if you look at the word day and the transcription here. So what this dictionary does, and probably a lot of other dictionaries would do, they would avoid using this symbol. So what these dictionaries are doing, they're doing broader than broad transcription. It is avoiding the use of the secondary symbol. It is avoiding the use of the diacritic here because it will assume that if there's two vowels following each other, they are a diphthong and probably they would, if they were not a diphthong, they would use a hyphen. They would say, for example, it's de. So if there is no diacritic, it's a diphthong. If it's not a diphthong, we will indicate it clearly. And because most of the time it's a diphthong, they avoid using this diacritic. So in a broad transcription, uh, you can skip that diacritic and just put this, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to consistently indicate whether a vowel is uh, syllabic or whether it's non-syllabic. It's in this case, it's non-syllabic. You see, if it was, if it were syllabic, I would put this small vertical line underneath it. What we're doing is. I'm presenting the symbols for words that probably everyone is familiar with. The word pen, everybody knows how to pronounce it, probably. Like to some degree, they know how to pronounce it in English. What is happening here is that, well, I'm starting the transcription with a word that is familiar. Why do I do this? Because you know the word pen and now you can you're transcribing a word you already know. So you can relate the symbols to the sound. This is pa, this is a, uh, this is na, but not really. This is the a uh, that we actually pronounce. It's not a closed mid vowel, it's an open mid vowel. Thanks for your time and attention and see you again soon.